Hello and welcome to Lesson 43 of Additional Maths with Mr Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at areas below the x-axis and how that affects our calculations and what we need to be careful of. Okay, so last lesson we looked at finding the area between two values of x under the curve of y and above the x-axis. And we, we understood that the process of finding the definite integral between two values gives us that area. Okay, so we're going to look at that process and apply it to questions where we have some area below the x-axis and see what happens. So imagine we had this question here. So let's try and find this shaded area with our current knowledge. So we have the graph of y equals 4x cubed, and we want to find the area between the curve and the lines x equals minus 2 and x equals 2 and the x-axis. So the green shaded area there. So with our current knowledge, we would probably be, be tempted to do the following integral. So integrate the curve, the function 4x cubed with respect to x between the limits minus 2 and 2. If we do that, this is what's going to happen. OK, so firstly, let's integrate. That will give us 4x to the power of 4 divided by 4, so 1x to the power of 4. If you can remember why we don't put plus c, then good on you. Now, let's substitute our limits in. If we plug 2 in, we will get 2 to the power of 4. And then we subtract the result we get when we substitute minus 2 in. And if we substitute minus 2 in, we get minus 2 to the power of 4. The first one is 16. The second one is 16. So our answer is zero. Uh-oh. That seems to be an issue because that area is clearly not zero and yet we've got an answer which is zero. So what's gone wrong? Okay, so here's what's actually happened. When we found the area between minus two and two or the integral, the definite integral between minus two and two, it has found us two values. The value of a, it has found us as minus 16. If you integrate between minus 2 and 0, the curve 4x cubed, you will get minus 16. If you do that definite integral and do the calculations, you will get minus 16. If you integrate between 0 and 2, you will get 16. So together, these values have added to 0. Now, clearly, that's not what we should be doing. But why is it that the first one, A, has given us negative 16? Why hasn't it just given us 16? If that area, and this is clearly symmetrical, so they should both be 16, so the area looks like it's going to be 32, why is it giving us an area which is negative 16? Okay, well, the reason is because I didn't necessarily tell you the whole truth of what the definite integral finds. It doesn't find the area between the curve and the x-axis. This is what it does, okay? So back to our definition of the definite integral between a and b. So the integral between a and b of f of x dx, what does it do? What it actually does is it gives us the sum of all of the rectangles that we create between a and b. And it gives us the sum of those if we increase the number of rectangles and reduce the distance between the rectangles, so reduce the value of h. So the integral is the limit as h tends to zero of the area of those rectangles. Well, it doesn't necessarily give us the area of the rectangles. It just gives us the, the width of the rectangle multiplied by the value of y. And so as long as y is positive, we've got an area, a positive area. But if the value of y is negative, then that integral okay, is going to be negative. It doesn't mean we have a negative area. It's just that the, the evaluation of that integral gives us a negative value. Okay. So in essence, we're thinking about these 
this rectangle here has an area of h times the height y and that will give us a positive value as long as y is positive but when the y coordinate is negative that will give us a negative value and we will get negative values from our integration okay so i think of it i like prefer think of it as what we're doing between a and b is we're adding up all the y values between a and b all the infinite y values between a and b so if those y values are negative we're adding up lots of negative values and together that will create a negative sum i won't say area because an area cannot be a negative thing but it'll give us a negative sum okay a negative total so what do we do so let's say we want to find this area the shaded area here okay between x is a and x is d and between the curve y equals f of x and the x-axis so those those three sections there well what we do is we are careful and we make sure we evaluate the integrals separately so we find the area of one we find the area of two and we find the area of three one and three will give us a positive answer two will give us a negative value. We just make that then positive and then we add up the three positive values together and we get the total area. And that is the process you are going to do. So whenever the curve goes through the x-axis and it goes onto the other side of the x-axis, you've got to be very careful and evaluate integrals between the values that you need so that you don't cancel out each other so if we evaluated the integral between a and c we would have effectively get one take away two the area of one take away the area of two and so the area of two will have cancelled out some of the area of one and that's not what i want so i need to integrate between a and b that'll give me a positive value integrate between b and c that'll give me a negative value which i will then make positive and then integrate between c and d and add those three positive values, once I've made them all positive, together and I've got the area. So let's look at that in practice. Let's do a question which involves this very thing. Okay. So find the area enclosed between the curve y equals x, lots of x minus two, lots of x plus three, and the x-axis. Okay. This is in a nicely factorized form so that I can see the roots of this and see where it goes through the x-axis really quickly. The roots of this function are x is zero, that's when y is zero, when that value will be zero. When x is two, y will be zero, when this bracket is zero, that's when x is two. And when x is minus three, so y will be zero when this bracket is zero, so that's when x is minus three. So those are the three roots of my function. So my curve here is a positive cubic curve. If I multiplied out y equals x, lots of x minus two, lots of x plus three, I would get, if I did the algebra, y equals x cubed plus x squared minus six x. That's a positive cubic because the coefficient of the x cubed is positive, it's one x cubed. So it'll have some, it'll look, like this it'll have that sort of shape that's what a positive cubic looks like so when we draw it and it's very important you draw it so that you can clearly see what you want to find you draw your axes you mark off the roots so zero two minus three and then you draw your curve through those points i know the general shape of the cubic so i'm going to follow that general shape and there we go so if i want the area enclosed between the curve so this curve y equals f of x or y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 6x and the x-axis then what i want really is i want that area and that area together so the total sum of those two areas. So I find them separately. I do not integrate between minus three 
and two, I integrate between minus three and zero, and then I integrate between zero and two. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So I'm gonna find area of the first section and the area of the second section separately. So area of section one, to find that, we do the integral of x cubed, and it is easier in the fully expanded form, the integral of x cubed plus x squared minus 6x between minus 3 and 0. We integrate that with respect to x. So firstly, we integrate. x cubed becomes a quarter x to the power of 4. x squared becomes a third x cubed. And minus 6x becomes minus 3x squared between the limits of minus 3 and 0. And then I substitute my limits in. So that will give me, if I substitute zero in, I'm just going to get zero. So a quarter of zero to the power of four plus a third of zero to the power of three minus three lots of zero squared is just zero. And then when I substitute minus three in, a quarter of minus three to the power of four plus a third of minus three cubed minus three lots of minus three squared. And you've got to be very careful when you're substituting minus three in, I would put brackets around it. So this is how I would write it. A quarter, if I was going to put it in my calculator, quarter lots of minus three to the power of four plus a third lots of minus three to the power of three minus three lots of minus three squared. Okay, so make sure you put brackets around every instance of minus three. So that will be zero minus minus 63 quarters which gives us 63 quarters as the area of the first part, okay? The second part, it's the same process, but with two different limits, okay? So it's the same integral, integrating x cubed plus x squared minus 6x, but this time between the limits of 0 and 2, okay? So the limits of 0 and 2 give us this area, so here's my first limit, there's my second limit. So I'm integrating between those two limits to get the second area. So I integrate that with respect to x. And it gives me the same integral, a quarter x to the power of 4 plus a third x cubed minus 3x squared. And I plug in the limits 0 and 2. So firstly, I substitute 2 in. And that gives me minus 16 thirds. And then I substitute 0 in, and that gives me 0. So that integral is negative 16 thirds. And I was expecting a negative answer. If we look at it, that second area is below the x axis, and hence you should get a negative integral. But what you do now is you make that positive. So the total area that we want, okay, is actually 63 quarters plus 16 thirds, okay? Because we take the positive value of all the areas we need. So the area required is equal to 63 quarters plus 16 thirds, which is 253 twelfths units squared. So that is how you find the area between the curve and the x-axis when you have some, some parts of the curve above the x-axis, some parts of the curve below the x-axis. Now it's time for you to have a go at one, okay? So with this question, pause, have a go. If you need to, rewind back and see how I went through the process. Make sure you do a drawing as well, visualize the problem and then I'll go through the answer. So the question is, find the area enclosed between the curve y equals x lots of x minus 4 lots of x plus 1 and the x-axis. Okay, so the roots are 0, 4 and minus 1, so my curve looks like this. Goes through at 0, at minus 1 and at 4. It is a positive cubic, so it will look something like this. When you expand out, the function is y equals x cubed minus 3x squared 
minus 4x. The area we want is the area between minus 1 and 0, and then the area between 0 and 4. Okay. So we find, firstly, the area between minus 1 and 0. So the area between minus 1 and 0 is given as the integral between minus 1 and 0 of x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x with respect to x. If you integrate that, you get a quarter x to the power of 4 minus x cubed minus 2x squared. And then you substitute the limits minus 1 and 0 in. And when you've done that correctly, you should get 0 minus minus 3 quarters. So that gives us an area of 3 quarters. And we were expecting a positive area there. In fact, we were expecting a positive integral there. Okay, the area is 3 quarters. The second area is the area between 0 and 4. So it's the same integral, but with different limits. So 0 to 4 of x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x with respect to x. So we get the same integral, a quarter x to the power of 4 minus x cubed minus 2x squared. And we substitute the limits 0 and 4 in. And if we've done that, so substituting 4 in gives me minus 32. Substituting 0 in gives me 0. So I get minus 32 as my integral. And therefore, my area for the second part is 32. So my total area required is 3 quarters plus 32. So either 32 and 3 quarters. But as you know, I much prefer top heavy fractions. They're much more beautiful than horrible mixed numbers. So 131 quarters units squared. So well done if you got 32 and 3 quarters or 131 quarters. Um, if you did, brilliant. Okay, you've got the general hang of this. What you should do now is go to the textbook and have a go at exercise 15.4. So practice this until you feel fluent in finding the right integrals and then making sure the areas are all positive and then finding the sum of those, okay? And then in the next lesson, we're gonna be looking at finding the area between two curves, not necessarily between the curve and the axis, okay? And seeing how we can find a simple process to make that easy to do. Okay, enjoy and I'll see you in the next lesson.